Dragon Fire, Dark Magic, and Nuclear Arms. All of these weapons and more can be found in the world of Total Warhammer 3. But there is no weapon more powerful than that of Morbid Obesity. And there is no greater faction to take advantage of Morbid Obesity than the Ogres, a race of extremely powerful and intelligent huh? creatures that are able to use their overwhelming size and strength to basically do whatever they want. And while most civilizations around the world worship gods and goddesses, powerful and omnipotent beings that bestow enlightenment to their civilization, the ogres worship this thing, the Great Maw, a giant hole in the ground surrounded by serrated teeth that they throw meat into for funsies. But in exchange for these meat sacrifices, bestows upon them powerful bonuses that allow them to do well in battle and even potentially walk faster, which is, in ogre culture, a really big deal because a lot of these guys don't move so good. Now this peak physical specimen is our glorious leader, Greasus Goldtooth. Yep, that's him. That's our guy. In the world of Total Warhammer 3, you can choose a vast array of different faction leaders, like this, a literal demon from hell, or a divine emperor that can turn himself into a dragon. But today we're going to choose what is basically the white version of Rick Ross. And it is here, the richest and most powerful ogre of them all decides to call his home, the Mountains of Morn, a land as picturesque as it is disturbing. And from this humble village we set out to build an empire. But the question still remains, what are our goals and how can we achieve them? So in order to achieve victory, we must control the Mountains of Morn, the Ivory Road, and the Bone Road. We also need to be able to loot, occupy, or raise 30 settlements. And oh look, we have our first victim now. One quick slap to the teeth and he goes down like a ton of bricks. Giving us an open path to take Grimtop, the very first city that we're going to add to our empire. I forgot to mention we have a wizard named Furtstank who literally chugs fire and shoots it out towards our enemies. He has a spell which shoots out a nice little explosive fireball. And then there's this spell, the burning head, which is... Pretty good. And as you can see, everyone in the battle pulled their weight equally. And then there's Furtstank, who literally got so many kills that it can't even be quantified on the screen properly. After our overwhelming victory, our enemies, the Cross Clubs, can't actually field a proper army, and it allows us to push forward and take a second settlement from them. While we have the momentum, we push forward even farther to take their final city, the Maw Gate. All their land and their cities are ours, which ultimately means that the Cross Clubs are no more. Our success led to us being able to complete a mission which gives us the Scepter of Titans. It grants Greasus' army a ton of bonuses, and it allows Greasus to do a ton of damage to larger foes. Word spreads quickly of our recent successes, and the Northern Ogre Tribes, which we were at war with, wants to give us a ton of money just for not attacking them anymore, which I will happily accept. At the same time, one of the Southern Ogre Tribes wants to join our faction because they don't want to get their ass kicked later on. So we happily accept and expand our borders further south. Knock knock, who's there? It's our new neighbors, the orcs, who are kind of like the ogres, but more green and weird. Our other new neighbors are the Chaos Dwarves, their leader, Drazwath the Ashen. They're demanding we give them $1,300 or they'll declare war on us. I have only one question about Grease's gold tooth. Does he look like a bitch? War it is. This actually provides us with a unique advantageous position. The ogres have contracts which they can perform. Basically, they're used as hired muscle for other civilizations in order to attack their enemies and conquer certain cities. And Pig Barter, one of the cities owned by the Chaos Dwarves, just happens to be a part of one of our contracts. This will also provide us with a relationship bonus to the orcs, our new neighbors to the north, and provide us with a good amount of gold. The only tiny issue is that we have to march our army through another faction's territory, but I don't foresee this being a problem whatsoever. Yeah! Gosh darn it. Well, the good news is we took Pig Barter, and the orcs took the Black Fortress, the capital of the Chaos Dwarves Empire. And would you look at that? Yeah, no. So Helmen Gorst and the Caravan of the Blue Roses are actually a pretty powerful faction that own quite a bit of land south of our borders. As you also probably noticed, we're also at war with the western provinces of Cathay. Right now that actually doesn't come into play, just 
put a pin in it for now and we'll come back to that later. Another important aspect of Ogre Lifestyle is the ability to build a camp. Sharing stories around the fire and feasting upon human flesh is a very important aspect of Ogre society. It basically gives you the opportunity to have a mobile city that provides bonuses and benefits as long as you're within the sphere of influence of the camp. It seems like Helm and Gorse generals just want to commit suicide, and oh look, our friends the Chaos Dwarves are now dead, unfortunate. And now, back on the scene with a major gangster lean, we have Helmand Gorst, and he brought ghosts with him. Clearly unaware that the ghost's biggest weakness is a giant stick. Oh, he's just, he's just going away. He's leaving. Well, that's another victory under our belt and another step closer to conquering the rest of their territories. So with our recent success, we were able to raise another army. The leader, Maldig Gallbladder. Oh, here's that gorgeous son of a bitch now. He is a face not even a mother could love. Remember when I said put a pin in it? Well, unpin it, because this guy is now declaring war on us. The good news is we get the opportunity to try out our bold new leader, Maldig Gallbladder, who takes two cannonballs to the face and decides to tuck tail and run. Don't worry, we claimed victory anyway. And oh look who's back! It's our glorious leader! And wouldn't you know it, after only one defeat, they decide to offer me a peace treaty. I am broke as hell, so I'm definitely taking this. Now that our incredibly powerful general, Maldig Gallbladder, is free, we can now backdoor the Blue Roses now that there's no more war with Cathay. And look who's back! It's our man Helmand Gorse. One swift kick to his cobweb-covered testicles, and he goes down like a sack of potatoes. Which means he's forced to retreat and only has his capital left to defend. This sets us up for one final glorious battle versus Helmand Gorse. After a long, arduous war, we finally overcame Helmand Gorst and the Caravan of the Blue Roses. Now all there is to do is mop up the remaining settlements and take care of some diplomatic business. Ah, we have another gym enthusiast, I see. So Kugath Plaguefather basically came in and took Flayed Rock from us, and we need that to complete our province. So we're going to do a little bit of diplomacy here. I know it's not very ogre-like, but we're going to trade our Shatterstone Bay for their Flayed Rock for an even one-for-one -one trade. So now we're completely surrounded by friends, except on our eastern border. We have ourselves those notorious bastards from Cathay that we need to deal with. So we're going to go ahead and move our armies forward, and we're going to produce a third army, whose leader, Dunk. That's right, the man's name is just Dunk. He's kind of like Seal, no last name. We're staring down the barrel of a pretty terrible situation. Not only are we going to go to war with the western provinces, but we have the northern provinces to deal with as well because, well, they just happen to be brother and sister and, uh, yeah, they come as a package deal. No time to waste. The incest twins need to feel the full wrath of Grease's gold tooth in the ogres. We push forward and take Kiang real quickly, and then we move Dunk a little bit farther east outside Hanyu Port. As it stands right now, it seems like we're going to be defeated, but the ogres have this little special ability where they can eat food, which, believe it or not, makes them even bigger somehow. With a victory under our belt and a belly full of meat, we have ourselves the opportunity to push forward towards Hanyu Port, the very first major city in the Cathay Empire. Will somebody please let these creatures in? They've been out here for hours. Well, we finally found our kryptonite. Non-functioning doors. With another decisive victory, we take Hanyu Port, the very first major city 
and our conquest of the Cathayan Empire. We use this momentum to take Zen Wu, the city slightly to the north, that's also a part of the same province as Han Yu. It seems we caught Cathay flat-footed, because none of their armies seem to be anywhere near their western provinces. And just as I say that, there he is, Zhao Ming, the Iron Dragon himself, shows up with a full force that's actually a pretty damn powerful army. But that's not going to stop Greasis and the rest of our forces from taking Baleful Hills right underneath Zhao Ming's nose. Zhao Ming was clearly intimidated by Greasis' intense physique, so he decided to tuck tail and run down south for some reason, allowing us to focus solely on the armies at Bridge of Heaven. We'll just casually eat all of these rockets real quick, no big deal. Yeah, f these guys in particular. Another triumphant victory, another city under our belt. And not only did we conquer Bridge of Heaven, but we also unlocked a Stonehorn, one of the most powerful units that the Ogres can field. And I've aptly named him Tiny Tim. Excellent job, Tim. And while Greasus' blitzkrieg of the eastern part of the Cathay Empire is working out very well, we have a problem in the northern push where Dunk is seemingly stonewalled by a large army centered at Shang Yang. Will you let this man play the drums, please? So we were able to defeat the army on the field, but conquering Shang Yang in our current weakened state is probably not an option at this point, so we're gonna make a heroic repositioning. And oh look, it's our best friend Xiao Ming, and he's offering us a peace treaty for 5,000, no. He would only offer us a peace treaty if he knows he was in trouble. So, we're going to continue to apply pressure and try to take Nong Chang next turn. And oh look who joined the party, it's Miao Ying of the Northern Provinces. So she decides to take Baleful Hills, which is a smart move. This forces us to move Dunk down south in order to protect Shang Wu, which, which I assume is her next target. There's a small rebellion outside the city, we take care of that real quick. And then Zhao Ming makes a very interesting tactical maneuver, where she moves her army in between two of our large armies. Doc, I think this guy just bent himself over a barrel a little bit. He did? Yeah, for our pleasure. God, my God. So if I were a betting man, I'd say we're going to win this battle pretty handedly. And oh, god damn it, that's a really big hill. All right, bets are off. Bets are off. Yeah, I, I, this is going to be tough. So we send our fearless leader in who takes several hours to reach the destination, only for him to get one weak ass hit off and they get slapped directly in the face. Anyway, I started blasting. Bah, bah. Only after two volleys from the lead belchers does she decide this shit hurts, and she decides to turn around and go somewhere. Oh, there she is. And there she goes. Malying then said this party sucks ass, and then does her best Irish goodbye on out of here. Just south of Bridge of Heaven, we have whose son? That's right, Lu's son. Once again, we're staring down a barrel of another Pyrrhic victory until we do what I call a pro-gamer move. Ah, close victory it is. So 20 seconds later, we've encountered another suicidal leader. Ah! And let's just say the battle went... Well. And the best part, no one important died. After defeating Miao Ying, our northern army decides to reconquer Zen Wu. And according to Autoresolve, our army is plainly inferior. And if you're wondering where the rest of Ming Fang's army is, this is it. This is, this is the whole army. Shockingly, we won in an overwhelming victory. This victory forces Zhao Ming out of hiding, but when he's confronted, he decides to tuck tail and run. And his sister, disgraced by his actions, decides, I ain't gonna be a part of that, and wants to offer us a peace treaty, and will give us a shit ton of money to boot. 
Awesome. We're going to accept this because this gives us the opportunity to focus solely on the Western provinces and take them out once and for all. All the greatest generals have gathered from Cathay and the Ogre Kingdoms in order to once and for all decide who is truly the king in the east. One massive final battle to decide who the victor will be, and it all culminates here at the small village of Tai Su. Truly a proverbial dick measuring contest between two very large egos. A crippling blow to a once mighty Ooh, empire. Master. And with one final sad attempt to take out Greasus and the ogre forces, they are once again swiftly smacked in the teeth. We push forward and take out the city of Jingpo, mopping up the rest of the settlements near Taisu, now that there's no armies to defend them. This leaves Zhao Ming in the western provinces with only one major city left, Shangyang, their capital. Now, Shangyang is a well-defended city, and the one thing that ogres are not good at is climbing walls. And now that we have them back in the corner, we decided not to do battle on their terms. Instead, we choose to starve them out, leaving their army to die a slow death every turn due to malnutrition and living in their own feces. But it is at that moment that I realize that perhaps it is time to turn the other cheek. And perhaps it is time to show mercy to a worthy adversary. Whoops, I misclicked. But before we can achieve total victory, we have to be able to control the Mountains of Morn, the Bone Road, and the Ivory Road. Fortunately, we don't have to own these settlements in order to complete our victory objectives. We can complete our objectives through military alliances, which we choose to do because Grimgor is our bro and has nothing to do with the fact that he is the most powerful faction in the entire game. And with that, our objective is complete. I want to thank you guys for watching and sticking it out to this far in the video and putting up with all my stupid ass jokes. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, please leave a like and uh, feel free to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.